Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to install MySQL 8 on Windows Server. So to install MySQL, you need to download the MySQL installer. So you will go to your favorite browser and you will say download MySQL installer for Windows. And here you can see we got this download MySQL installer. So click on this particular link. Make sure to go to the official website which is dev.mysql.com. And here you can see we got the latest version Microsoft Windows. Now there are two options. You can choose the smaller package. If you choose the smaller package, while the installation happens, it will go off the internet. Or you can choose the full package. If you choose the full package, the internet access is not required while installation. Now it says here 32 bit. However, this 32 bit will be able to install on 64 bit as well. So we will use this particular installer. So I'm going to click on this download. Here again, you can either log into Oracle account or you can say, no thanks, just start my download. I'm going to click on this and you can see that the, in the background, it has started downloading the MySQL installer for us. The, we are, as I mentioned, we are installing MySQL installer community edition 8.0.36, which is latest as of today. So the download has completed. Click on this open button. You can close the Firefox. We don't need the browser anymore. And click on this install. And this, when you click on this install, it's going to prompt you. So do you want to allow this app to make changes? Click on yes. And it will prompt one more time. Probably it may not prompt on your system based on how the security is configured. Now choose the type so server client full custom will choose the custom click on next here you can see there are no products to be installed what we will do is like we will select the products from this side so mysql server click on this plus button click on this plus button click on this and choose this and then once you selected that click on this arrow button and you can see that we have got mysql server similarly do that for the mysql workbench and do that for the shell as well. So we have done this for three components, server, workbench, and shell. Click on next. As you see that we have selected these three components, execute, which will start installing these three packages. Now, the server and workbench normally installs quickly. The shell, because it installs multiple components, the shell normally takes a little bit of longer time. So give it a minute for all three components so right now the shell is getting installed which is going to take a little bit longer time compared to these two packages so have patience and i'm not going to pause this particular video because it will it will soon be done so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I thought by the time I count 20, it should be done, but it's not done. But anyway, it, it should be done anytime soon. So that looks good. So that's done. Click on next. Now it says ready to configure. We need to do some configuration changes. So click on next. We, we can choose the type of computer, development computer, server computer, dedicated computer or manual based on based on how your computer has been defined. If the dedic dedicated computer means that this particular machine will be only used for MySQL. So you can use this or you can choose whatever option. So let's say we'll go with the developer development computer. TCP IP, this is the default port. 3306 is the default port. If you want to change it, you can change it and open Windows Firewall port for network access. Click on next. Use strong password. So this is the newer version, newer method. And this is the recommended method. So we'll go with this particular option will give the root password now i'm going to give the password as password but probably you should give a stronger password but this is and you can clearly see that it says it's a weak password so i'm going to be okay with that now configure mysql server as a windows service and what is the name of that particular service and when the machine starts do you want that service to start automatically so that can behavior will be controlled from here and run windows service as standard system account so we will choose this particular option which is the default option click on next and this is some of the 
permissions at the directory level. So we will say yes, grant full access to user running the Windows service. So click on next. And then when we click the execute, it's going to do these steps. These are the configuration steps. The installation is completed. These are the configuration steps. So click on execute and it's going to go through these steps one by one. Let's wait for these steps to complete. And that looks good. If you want to take a look at the log, you can take a look at the log. If you want to save this particular log, you can save this. Click on finish and configuration is completed. Click on next. You can start the MySQL workbench and you can start this cell. Let's choose to start the MySQL workbench. Again, you can start the MySQL workbench from here as well. So if you uncheck this, if you uncheck this, you can still start it. But I'll say I'll keep this so that we don't have to go there and start it. So now the MySQL workbench has started. Let's connect to the database. To connect to the database, we'll say database, connect to the database. And here we'll choose the drop down, local instance, local instance, click on OK. And this is the password that I gave. And I'm going to save that particular password so I don't have to enter the password every time. So click on the password is literally password. That's the password that we gave. And you can see that we are now connected to MySQL instance, which is locally running on this particular machine. Now we can't see here any schemas or databases here. To see the schemas, we'll click on this schemas. If you click on administrator, we'll, administration will get this screen. If you get the schemas, we'll get this screen. And if you want to create a new schema, right click on this empty space and say create schema and give the name of your schema. So let's say first schema. So we are going to create first schema and click on apply and it says create schema first key schema. So click on apply and you can see here first schema appear. Now, if you want to create a table in that schema, let's right click. So oh, expand that schema. Right now there are no tables and we'll say right click create table and we'll say table called employee and we'll create two columns in the table. One is amp id which is of integer primary key and the second table second column called amp name which is varchar 45 and we'll say apply and you can see it has generated this particular script create table in this schema called amp with two column amp id amp name and amp id is the primary key click on apply and that looks good click on finish and we can see our table called amp has appeared in our schema. So now that we can start inserting the records, etc. But I just I want to show you something more. So how to connect to the MySQL using the command prompt. So I launch the Windows command prompt and then you can say MySQL minus U root minus P. Now this is not going to work because the command prompt doesn't know where is the MySQL. So if I run this, you can see MySQL is not recognized because it cannot find it. So what we need to do, we need to navigate to the location where the MySQL is installed. So C type program files, MySQL, MySQL server 8 bin. So this is the location program file, MySQL, MySQL server 8 bin location. And I'll go to that particular directory. And now if I run exactly same command, which failed, this time that command works and now we, you can see we are connected. Now here is one thing. Now here is one thing. If every time you don't want to go to this particular directory, every time you don't want to go to this particular directory, what you can do is you can edit the system environmental variables. So go to edit system environmental variables. You can edit for the current user or you can change it at the system level. So we'll change the system level variable. So any user can launch this MySQL. So here we are going to enter this particular directory location into the path variable. So click on OK, click on OK, click on OK. That's done. And if I now launch the Windows command prompt, then I don't have to go to that particular directory. I can just run MySQL minus U root minus P and that should work. So we can now launch MySQL from anywhere. So you can see that we are connected to MySQL 8.0.36. Now, to look at the databases, we can use the command to databases and you can see that we got five databases, including the first schema that we just created. If you want to create connect to this particular schema, you will say use first schema. And that's done. And now if I say, show me the tables 
then we should be able to see our table called M in this. And if I say select star from M, we should get this as empty set because we just created the table. We did not insert the record. So what we have learned is we learned how to install MySQL. We learned how to connect to the MySQL instance using the workbench, how to create the schema, how to create a table and how to connect to the MySQL using the command prompt. So with this, I would like to end this particular tutorial. We learned how to install MySQL 8 on Windows in this particular tutorial. And if you did like this particular video and if you do like my channel, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye bye.